Okay, so welcome to uh, now the torso section of artistic anatomy. So what I'm going to show you with the help of the skeleton in this particular section is the relevant bones of the torso. So what we think of in terms of these areas, and really all bones, is um, how to break them down into more simple, more manageable volumes and solids. To really draw the figure well, you want to memorize the, quite frankly, the entire skeleton. To be able to draw the skeleton out of your head from imagination. And it's really not as hard as you think it is. It might seem daunting at first. But what you want to know is you want to have knowledge. Then you want to be able to isolate the bones and or the muscles too. And then group them back together stronger with the muscles and the bones and then apply them to uh, living anatomy, drawing from observation or reference, and practice it um, daily, weekly, monthly, and over years, and, and you'll have it, and you'll make your drawing stronger. Now, one warning about anatomy, it doesn't solve all your drawing problems. It's better to come to anatomy over time when you've got some, some advanced training in before you get to you get to uh, anatomy with the, with the bones, certainly, and the muscles. So just one, one piece on that. So you do want to memorize, certainly, the skeleton and be able to draw it from different positions. So let's, let's break down now the, the bones of the torso, both front and back. And then after we do this, we'll point them out on the skeleton here. Then we'll go to the drawings and work on our drawings. And I'll show you how to, how to think about them a little bit more simply so that you can put them together and see them on the model when you draw, and then be able to draw them out of your head when you need them as well. All right, so let's take a look at the, uh, the, the positions here, the, the forms here. So the first thing we want to start with is obviously the rib cage. So the rib cage is just like its name. It's cage-like, okay? It's box-like. It's an egg form with a box-like kind of feel. And the, the opening of the, of the neck is actually quite narrow, it's quite, quite small. I'll tip it over in a moment and let you see it a little bit further. But it's actually quite small at the top. And it's a little bit angled, about 15 or 20 degrees downward towards us. So the egg form roughly of the rib cage is then mitigated by the sides which are a little bit more boxy or a little bit more flatter in its orientation. So we have some points, some things to, to show you. First thing is the sternum or the center of the, the rib cage. And it's really the center of the front of the form all the way down to, to the, the, the end of the pelvis, the pubic bone in through here. So the sternum is made up of the manubrium, which is the top area, which is where the clavicles, these S S-curved or S-shaped forms of the, of the upper torso that gets you to the shoulder are located onto, but it also, the manubrium is also the area where the sternocleidomastoid muscles attach to here and here later on. So it gives you that stability. Then we have the base or shaft, if you will, of the, of the sternum or your breastplate. And then we have down here the xiphoid process. And the xiphoid process, as you can see, is a little bit more pointy. Um, and it gets ossified over time uh, as you get older in adults. Now, the entire rib cage is, for obvious reasons, right, breathable or expandable. And one reason is why the costal cartilage, you can see here the discoloration here. This is cartilage in this area. It's a little softer in, to help with expansion of the diaphragm sitting in here and opening up and contracting, opening up and contracting as, as we breathe. So we have the rib cage, the sternum, the, the ribs. Now the ribs are, are costals. They're, they're 24 in total, okay? Um, and we're not gonna draw every one when I draw the rib cage. I'll show you, I'll show you a little bit more simpler technique. Unless you wanna study every single one, which takes a lot of time and a lot of detail, and rendering, and that's fine. I've seen other artists do that sort of thing, and I think that's a great study, but we want to be able to memorize this form, all of these forms, and to do that, you've got to think and reduce them down a little bit more simply. So these are the costals of the ribs. You have 12 pair, 24 total, and uh, as we get down to one, two, three, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the true ribs, okay? Then you have three that are false ribs that are not necessarily attached. And then you have two that are floating in through here at the bottom. So you have these little floating ribs here at the bottom. So they're false ribs, we call false ribs and floating ribs down in through here as well. Now what you'll notice too on the rib cage is that they actually obviously attach to the costal cartilage but they tend to run downward and then back up and around. So you can think of this as an egg form at times and you can think of this as a cylinder at times running around and then this boxy side form you can think of here as a little bit flatter and more squeezed as well. So they run slightly downward and then back up, back up, and then they turn. So let's turn the skeleton now a little bit and so you can see that. We'll get the arm out of the way. You can see they start, these rib, ribs start to really begin to turn, 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 and they come around the, the foreman through here like so. And then they'll start to attach to the back here Okay, to the vertebrae, the, the spine, riding through this particular area. So now you notice that the rib cage back here will emanate and they get larger as they go down where the, the cervical area, we have the thoracic area, lumbar area, and through here with the costals of the ribs. And they tend to have a downward trend to them, don't they? Even as in the side, they still begin to have more of a downward trend about 45 degrees as they at, here at the top about 15 to 20 and they get downward trending even further as we go down the rib cage. That's going to be important too. You'll see that on the model but you can also commit that to memory. That's going to be helpful too as well. Let's uh, now take a look at the clavicle area. So the clavicles when I draw them, being I'm from Texas, and so we have a lot of cows or longhorns and steers in Texas, and I think of these, these clavicles as horns, as longhorns. I've heard them called bicycle. I was taught bicycle handles when I was at Art Center in LA and Pasadena, and that's great too. And I, I just try to own my teaching, and I think of them as longhorn areas, and this would be the head of the bull in through here. However you want to think about them, it's great. But the clavicles, again, attach to the sternum at the manubrium and are very curved bones and very important bones. They show up in many different poses. Let me show you how S-curved they are. I'm going to tilt our model, our skeleton forward to you and hopefully it doesn't fall down, but you can start to see the S shape of those forms right in through here. Look how curved that is. So what we want to understand is that this entire system is not flat. It's very much rounded. Now the pectorals later will make it seem a little flatter, but it's still very round. So we get this wonderful curve that emulates kind of a clamp. You can see the scapula in here. Kind of a clamp system, but curving around the rib cage, curving all the way over and getting to later on, we'll talk in a moment about the scapula on both sides. They are also about the width of the head long. So there's some nice little measurements that we can utilize here to help us out. So for instance, the clavicles roughly here are about the same distance as the sternum minus, minus the xiphoid process down here. So the clavicle about the same length, also the width of the head here, if you notice up and through here, okay? Just barely in the camera, it's a little slightly out of the camera, but you get the idea here. It's about the width of the head, which is also the clavicle structure, which is also the sternum in through here, minus the xiphoid process, and then down here to about the 10th rib. The 10th rib is important as it shows up quite a bit in your drawings on the figure. So we have the false ribs, the two floating pair in through here, uh, floating and false. 
Um, and they, they rarely show up in anatomy. They just get buried by muscle and subcutaneous fat. But the 10th rib is so important. So again, that measurement that you'll see quite often, and I'll show you when we draw, sternum minus the xiphoid process, clavicle, width of the head to the 10th rib can be delineated in many different variations from really also the width of the head to the, about the top of the nose to the sternum from the top of the nose to the sternum and the sternum length to the 10th rib it works out really quite nicely. Let's go now to the back of the torso area that we want to learn. So we'll tilt this guy around here a little bit. Pull him back a little bit. Let's talk about now the vertebrae and the scapula. Move these legs out of the way. Okay. So the vertebral column in through here, coming all the way down and ending at the bottom of the coccygeal curve. Sacrum coccygeal curve. So we have the cervical curve. I'll show you that in a moment. We have the thoracic area. We have the lumbar area. Then we have the sacral coccygeal area at the end. These are all bones that are fused uh, together. If we take off the iliatic crests of the, the pelvis in through here, we have the, the sacrum in through here. So the, the vertebrae, there's actually 33 of those. Uh, counting what's on the, the sacrum and the, the, the coccyx area, they're essentially tiny little stout cylinders, okay, if you think about them. And they have these transverse processes here to the side, and then they have a spinous process that, that pokes out, like a nose, with the spinous process being a nose, and the transverse process is on the lateral edges of each left and right, kind of like wings or horns again, almost like an elephant. So if you think of an elephant or an aardvark nose, and you have these transverse processes off of a cylinder, you get the basics of the vertebral column. Very important. So when I teach anatomy and when I draw it, you know, I see all the little bone the irregularities and little uh, hard uh, calcium ossified areas, those are wonderful to draw if you want to render for hours and hours. And I, I advise you to do that, you know, set light on it. This is what this course is not about. It's more about uh, identifying and knowing and then uh, separating, isolating, and finding out what their fundamental forms are so you can draw, are, so you can draw them from any position at any time and then group them together and draw them from any position. Not only does that, is that powerful for drawing from observation, but also from imagination as well. So I try to combine those two, which is really particularly important, these two aspects of drawing. So that gives you the, the uh, vertebral crawl. Let's turn it a little bit now to the side and take a look at these four dominant curves that happen with the spine. So the spine is not a, a straight organism. I'm going to take off uh, the head of our model here for a moment. And let's look at that a little bit deeper. There we go. Take the head off. We'll set it down here to the side. And let's look at this. Let's look at this curve. We have four major curves that help stabilize the back. The cervical curve comes inward back towards us a little bit, or back towards the front actually. So we have the cervical curve, which gets you to C7. You see that protrusion right here that hangs out right there. That is the seventh cervical vertebrae. And if you reach back and touch the back of your neck, you can feel it pop out. Everybody can feel it pop out. It is a bony landmark and one that you want to to know and to look for and to help with your, with your drawing right off. This ends the cervical area to the neck. So we have an inward curve. Then we have the thoracic curve coming down. Do you see it? In through here. So it really turns from C7 all the way, a really strong inward, beautiful curve to about the 10th rib. That's the thoracic area or the rib cage area of the chest. So we have an inward curve, we have an outer curve. And then from the 10th rib, to about where the sacrum starts, 
we have the lumbar curve. So we have curve one, curve two, curve three, and of course our last curve is the sacral coccygeal curve back outwards. So this is a beautiful particular rhythm and you want to understand that the human figure is not straight up vertical, it is not uh, straight horizontal. We are not 90 degree uh, uh, species. We are an organic species of torques and twists and turns and stabilization points that help us uh, stand upright, stand erect, and move in all kinds of different turning positions. The, the vertebrae, the cylindrical quality of them, as we move to down the curves, those cylinders get larger and larger. Remember, there are 33 of them, especially they top out down here at about, oh, 27, 28, maybe 30 roughly, uh, maybe 27, 28, uh, down in the lumbar region of, 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 of largest. But there is that beautiful cervical curve, thoracic, lumbar, and then the sacral coccygeal curve. Okay. Let's go on now to the last bones of the uh, torso, and that is the beautiful shoulder blades or the scapula. You know, the scapula, I believe it's a Latin term, meaning like a shovel. I believe the Romans thought the scapula looked kind of like a hoe or a shovel from, from my research. Uh, shows that, and I could see where that you could dig with that, and you could you could dig up you know earth and plant whatever you needed to do that. Um, the shoulder blades of the scapula. What well, the first thing that you notice about them is what they're very triangular. You know, for all these bones, what's their simplest form? That's what's important. So they're very triangular in nature. They are not quite 45 degrees, this particular turn here, from the outer edge outward, they're a little bit larger than 45 degrees. So it's not quite a, a true 45 degree area here, coming back. Number two, they really begin to start topping out at C7, okay? So they stop out at C7, and they really begin to end about halfway down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here on the uh, costal rib, so seventh rib. But what you notice is, again, if you did measure, you measured here, it is about the width of the sternum too as well, down, isn't that nice? So it fits pretty nicely in that kind of measuring device and through here. So the scapulae, the scapula, end about halfway down the rib cage. Triangular, they float on top, they are not touching bone. There's muscle in between there, quite a few muscles in between there, especially the serratus anterior, and we'll talk about them in the muscle section. So they float on top. Um, parts you want to be familiar with. The acromion process of the spine of the scapula here really shows up in much of what we see and observe on the model. These particular points show up quite a bit. And remember this, the acromion process comes all the way over, and I like to think of it, it kisses the clavicle, just because it rhymes. But they do touch, get close, close to touching. Now there's cartilage in between, and there's other material, subcutaneous fat, ligaments. But they come around and they occur, and I'll show you the top in a moment. So the clavicle and the acromion process make a little curvature rhythm in through here for the top. Okay, they touch. That's important. Now, on the front side, let's go back to the front here. We have two areas that are going to become important for muscle attachments later on. And this is the carotid process here that comes from the back curls on over. This little point nub right in through here, which is very important. And then the glenoid cavity slightly underneath it, which is where it's hollowed out, this little cavity, which helps to fit the ball of the humerus, obviously right on top of it. So let's review that again. We have the acromion process, curving from the back, curving around, kissing the clavicle, and then it curves over to the sternum, sternum right? Carotid process here, which is second, and then the glenoid cavity, which sits right underneath that. You, you want to commit that to some memory in drawing. That will help. But again, the, the uh, glenoid cavity will help control and basically it's ball socket joint 
of uh, humerus. All right, so there we go. Those are the bones of the torso. So now let's commit them to uh, drawing. Let's take a look at them and see how we can draw them and help you commit them uh, to memory over time. Okay? All right, let's go to that. All right, so now let's tackle this problem of the torso, both the front and back, and drawing. So let's, let's think about ways in which we can look at this anatomy bone-wise and simplify it some so we can draw it um, over and over again and, and memorize it. So I think I'll start out over here and we'll just uh, continue now our, our studies. And let's start to think about the rib cage. So we've got this opening of the rib cage, right? And it's very much very narrow in through here. So the first thing we want to think about. Let me bring, actually bring this down, or I can bring the camera angle up. I've got to get that in there. It wouldn't be good. There we go. A little bit more, maybe. How about that? That's it. Okay. So <clears throat> we've got this opening here of the the top of the rib cage, and as we bring this down, we're going to feel the sternum now about right in through here. So we've got this measurement we talked about. That's not the xiphoid process. Then we're going to be feeling this idea coming across here now, same kind of distance here to here to get us down to the tenth rib right in through here. So this same distance. Now with the rib cage it's an egg form but it's also a box and students make Arts make this mistake a little bit that it's a little bit narrower and then it kind of flattens out a little bit all the way down. It gets a little, it's wider for sure as we come down the, the bulk of it. Then it starts to curve back in through, as you see, right in through here and then up and simplifying this over to where the base of the sternum is, here and here, right? And then back over and into the tenth rib down below here, all right? So that's your, your form in there for now, your basic form of the rib cage. And it's a pretty uh, easy to uh, remember kind of, kind of form. So let's add on now the, the, uh, the sternum here. So we have the manubrium in here, which the top is pretty heavy of the sternum and that's you know, it attaches ribs attached to that all through down through here. Then we have the shaft as it comes back in a little bit. And it's pretty wavy and curvy and through here. We're gonna simplify it a little bit further and then come on down to the end over here and get to <clears throat> the uh, xiphoid process and it points out a little bit further, tips out a little bit right in through here and this gets ossified later on over time. So that's a pretty easy to remember you know, kind of structure right in through there. So this distance minus the xiphoid process about the same over here out to the tenth rib. This curves out a little bit further, this cartilage, right, then comes over, comes on down, curves out a little bit, comes over, comes on down, and we can kind of isolate the costal cartilage in this kind of region like this. This is a little bit flatter, but the whole thing is still fairly much on a curve. I think that's important to obviously memorize. I wouldn't draw it if I didn't if I didn't think so. So that's important to get that get that around in theory. So let's look at it from uh, some different positions too uh, as well, and then we'll come back and we'll put on. Uh, the clavicle a little bit too. Notice now I didn't, I'm not drawing every costal rib. Um, I don't want, you know, I know some artists do that with anatomy. I've seen that where they spend this, this amazing amount of time doing these sort of French academic renderings. You can do that, but I think that the, the greater way to learn is to simplify their form and repeat that so you can, you can see it uh, in your imagination. And of course, if you want to do renderings of this, that's fine, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, simplify this out. This is how I was taught in, taught in Los Angeles, so you can always get other different views. And of course, the back of the the back of the ribs here go up and over and through through there. All right, so let's take a look now at a side view here. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that we've got a tilt going on. We've got a tilt 
here of about 15, 15 degrees. I can vary, but we've got this tilt opening of, of the area of the top costal cartilage back to, of course, the spinal areas right back in, right back in through there. So we tip out here. And as we come down, the sternum falls out a little bit after a tilt here of about 15 or so, about right in through here. Then we come back in, the rib cage wants to come back in and around now to the mark of the sternum over here to the 10th rib, about right in through here. Okay, we have that. And then we're going to curve back in through here, that thoracic curve we talked about first, right? Cervical curve here, back this way. Okay, the neck comes out like this, right? We have our cylinder. And then we have that beautiful thoracic curve, and it's gonna end then about at that 10th rib. So we're at 10 here, right? We're at 10, then we're at 10 there. <clears throat> now the costal cartilage here, after we get the sternum on, we won't see a whole lot of sternum. The manubrium gets a little wider, certainly, in through here. It comes out kind of a platelet area in through here, and we have the xiphoid process right in through there. So we get that 10th rib, the costal cartilage ends right in through here. And it's kind of a place where I think of it as a box. So we're turning, right? We're turning this costal cartilage here. And then it, it flattens out a little bit as it comes down, it flattens, but it also wants to turn back this way. That's important uh, to denote uh, as well. So we have that, that side view. Again, this tilt is going to be very important in our, our drawing here. So now a back view we're going to take, and I'll show you the same kind of feeling. It's, it's similar to the front, so we'll start out. Now we're not going to see an opening of that rib cage, right? We're not going to see that opening since we're in the back. Well, we can think of the top as an oval form in through here, right? Then we'll come in and we're going to flatten, flatten downward in through here, to about seven in through here, in over, flatten and come down. So we've got a little bit more of an egg form, I think, in the back to deal with. And we're about at 10 here. 10 here, and then we're coming down now. We got a little bit of false rib, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just finish it out kind of as a blunt sort of egg, right in through there. Okay, so first thing we look at and through here, and we want to start to feel now the vertebrae coming in. So I'm gonna we're gonna simplify this area a little bit. Um, and before I tell you what, before we do that, let's let's think it through the inside of it, just like we did the front. We can find that opening here. Now it's higher here now. So we're right here, this is C7. Here's the spinous process of C7, right through there. So it's C7, about right here, and those costal cartilage, the first one, the smaller one, higher here, and then the inside here, I'll do it in a different color. We'll see that inside here, okay? Lower then, so we can now find the angle now in the length of the sternum down to right before the xiphoid process about right in through here and then over and out to the tenth rib so that feels pretty pretty good now in terms of our distance then we get the tenth rib we come on down to the eleventh from the twelfth that are that are tiny pretty floating and then we come back on in a curve okay it wants to come really far back on in. It shoots up pretty good in through here, like so. Okay, so we have that. Now what happens is we've got our vertebral column coming through in here. So there's this split or division where the costal ribs are coming and curving, right? And they're coming on up and through here like this, okay? Like this, up and through, like so, like so. <clears throat> and they get a little bit flatter as they start to come through curve on in like so up turn and so on and what happens here is we start to get now where they attach to the uh, part of the vertebrae it creates a cylinder pattern so watch this will come on up all the way until the end we had to find a way to simplify this form right we'll come up here so the way I teach the rib cage is to think of them both as these 
uh, cylindrical forms, right, that <clears throat> have this curved idea. It's, it's really shown nicely in the rib cage. So they curve here, okay? Then they tend to come under and curve underneath here, okay, um, in the, the spinal area where the vertebral column is. Of course, the spinal, the, uh, the spinal processes, this is C7 here, right, then we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. You can keep on coming down all the way, all the way down. Um, again, is we can simplify this into a nice column in through here. So I'll just end this down with a column in through this area. And of course, we have the crests of the pelvis, iliac crest here, about at the end of the tenth, roughly, maybe the seventh, a little bit wider here, and they're curving here and here. That's important to see. And of course, the sacrum. It's kind of triangular processes of the <clears throat> of the bone itself here and here down and then of course coccygeal right in, right in through there to, to, to keep it pretty simple and out and we see that that angle coming out so these curve over curve underneath in the uh, the uh, spinal processes here are the vertebral problem, column and then outward again through the costal ribs coming out in through here and so they turn outward again like so so you get that you get that particular turning I think it's really really important to begin to show that and then they start to turn down and up and over so we get this action right we get the under action of the ribs here and then we get the action back over again. So if we have to simplify, you know, this position even further, we would say, okay, this is like this. This is a cylinder here, right? <clears throat> we have a cylinder here, and then we have another cylinder next to it, not quite touching, not quite touching. <clears throat> Okay, here and here, and what happens now is we come to this rib cage. It gets a little bit wider on the cylinder here, right? Bulges, and there's reasons why for the rib cage itself, but also the muscles later on gets a little bit wider here, right, coming through. And what we have is this overturn. It'd be kind of flat here, under, but it's over the cylinder, over, over, over. In our perspective, as we get higher or lower, these might be a little longer. How about that? A little bit more. Like so. They come over, come underneath, then come back over again. Right, and of course, then they want to go around that area. So that's important to see that. Um, and of course, there's a lot of shadow at times that will gather in here, okay, right in through there. We can put a little shadow on the sides of these. You can see that <clears throat> gathering in through here. Okay, but the, the point is to get that turn of our spine in through here. So let's, we'll render out a little bit of this further. Like so. Coming down that vertebral crawl, those cylinders. Okay. We'll push that in a little bit. And you get this turn in. So that's the, the feeling of the rib cage right in through there. Of course, we have the oblique coming down, attaching, oblique come down, attaching on top, in through there, the muscle. We'll get to that in the next lecture on the torso, right in through there. So that's a, probably a, a fairly simple way to grasp and get uh, the rib cage. Now, what happens when we start to get different views of the rib cage? That's when things get a little, little different, a little spikier. So I can start to show you uh, uh, different, different ways of to looking at the rib cage. So let's take the rib cage now. Let's come back over here 
And let's start to think of the very top of the rib cage as we look down on it. This is going to be a particularly difficult view, and you'll get this view sometimes. And so we can think of it as the top of a, of a box. This is where we, the box starts to come into play. We look at that. And so I start to think of this area as kind of an eye, like so. Here, in here, <clears throat> you can start to see the eye shape emerge. And this tells you a lot about the shape of the, of the rib cage, if you will. And so what we get here is we're going to get, in the center part, we're going to get this point where we have the sternum here, the manubrial top of the sternum, pretty thick, comes up a little bit higher, right, where the clavicles are going to hang on to, okay? And then we get this bulge here of, this, of the body. We don't really see the xiphoid process in this point, okay? Then we're going to get these, these uh, top costal ribs here to about right in through here. And then, of course, those are the ribs in through. We're going to get the entire rib cage feeling in through here, right? So we get this, this feeling coming over here, okay? So we get that. The back here, you're going to find that we have now the vertebrae, okay? Over through here attached. Right? Whoops, broke a pencil, of course. We have that. Attached here, we'll go to dark now, right in through here. <clears throat> Spinous process, transverse, we'll talk about those in, in, in more detail in a moment. We have that spinal column in through here. So we're trying to think of this simply. So <clears throat> the next move now is we start to talk about, this is a great place to really start. The clavicle is this wonderful S-shaped curve that starts here, comes around and over, kind of like a bicycle handle or a longhorn horn, <clears throat> and it moves over and outward this way, flattens out some to here, okay? All right, we have it on both sides, so let's get both sides now of the equation. This comes over, so we'll get the gesture of it first and pull it out and through here a little bit, and they're raised up. That's going to be important. So we have this coming up and over now, attached right to the maneuver, and they kind of fit nicely together. They come up. The shape is here. And so we have this S curve going one direction, right? So it goes you know, up in this way, and then it shoots and turns and kind of flattens out this way. But it's not a flat bone, and we can't draw it straight. It curves. It wants to feel this rib cage curve here, okay? And, and work with it as it comes around. Okay, and this attaches back to the, to the spine and through here. This is the, the opening of the neck and through here on the top of the cylinder. You can see that. Okay. And <clears throat> then we curve here, and it curves back towards the, the uh, front of the body a little bit. So we have that. And through here. Okay, so we have those clavicles put on. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and put the clavicles on everything here before as we as we glide across here, and then we can come back and put the scapula on too as well, and think about the scapula. So the again the clavicle here, wrapping around, attaching at the manubrium here, wrapping around, and then coming out like a bicycle handle or a longhorn horn or any other way you want to think about it. Right in through here, nice and flat, in through here, coming on over. And again, they're about the same distance here to here. Maybe a little bit longer, huh? They're a little bit more perspective, but a little bit, a little bit longer. So we have that curling around, coming up, coming through. Maybe like a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Any kind of small bike. And we have that. And through here, there we go. All right, so clavicles there, and they show up so often in anatomy. Then we have a clavicle to the side here, coming up, curving around, and then starting to come outward towards us and flatten out. This will be a little bit wider in this view, and then bulge out and have a really foreshortened perspective like that. We wouldn't see the other one; might just see a little bit curving back in that in that way of the neck. And then here in the back view, 
the full vac view now we could see where so we have to see through that right we see that the clavicle here come up curl around right and then emerge come up curl around okay and then emerge after the curve here higher than and then start to come out flat and come back towards the body sun this way kind of like kind of like that so coming up over coming out and emerging a little bit longer like so out through the the rib cage and through into here and that gets more opaque with materials we're seeing through and then great obviously greatly simplifying the uh, effect of uh, we, what we see in terms of anatomy all right so let's add the uh, the the, um, the scapula let's talk about the scapula a little bit further so the the scapula are these tr wonderful triangular shaped uh, bones so that's the first thing you want to think about is a triangle and they're they're a little wider than uh, 45 degrees when we take into effect from the tip of the bone to the acromion process outward here so this is a little greater than this angle just slightly greater than 45 degrees so keep that in mind it's it's and it's just about an equilateral triangle into here so the first thing is I'll I'll throw out the <clears throat> scapula here. We'll look at it this way from the back looking at it and the first thing you want to realize is you've got the spine of the scapula or we call the chromium process which comes out through here divots over okay got this divots over in through here has a little back to it where muscles attach the trapezius being one of them which is a major one in through here comes open over to <clears throat> the acromion process which is a pretty pretty big area and this acromion process curls around and comes back on the other side we'd see a little bit more of it on the other side and it actually what i what i call is kisses the clavicle so the clavicle is here this ending part ending part here actually touches the acromion process right in through here then it wants to curl around and come back down to the manubrium do there so they actually they'll actually touch roughly right in through there now the next area we have it's harder to see in this viewpoint uh, I'll show you in a in a front view but the back view is what you'll normally get mostly is you'll get the carotid process which is where tendons and muscles will attach to that are important in the front part of the torso um, you'll get a little of, uh, you'll start to see it here, but it turns and comes around um, and it's a little like a finger, like a crooked finger points right at you. But you get to see now this part, the glenoid cavity right here, the back side of it, it's kind of like a, a divot right in through here. You get the latter part of it and then we come back and we go back and curve and finish up the, the, uh, the scapula here, right in through here. And this, this whole area here is greatly curved over, kind of an over curving running through there. So that's important as it over curves. The glenoid cavity right in through here is the ball and socket area of the scapula to the humerus. So we have the ball of that humerus here, right in through here, sockets out right in through here it gets a little flatter on this side there's a little protrusion there kind of a ball in through in through here and then we can go ahead and come on down with it so very triangular in its in its orientation so the scapula really is a workhorse there's a lot going on with it. it's a very important bone uh, for surface anatomy uh, that we see quite a bit um, with with drawing and uh, on the model so let's take this scapula here and let's uh, take it underneath now or actually let's move it and look at it from the uh, 
the underneath side and under curving side and there's a reason uh, of why we do that as well so <clears throat> if we come over here now and take a look at it we see the under curving of it here like so I'll try the same color make sure we're in the camera so we'd see that so getting to know these bones we getting to know that <clears throat> that shape as we turn it through here okay we have that so we're getting that shape right now <clears throat> as we see this we could start to feel this curve right over here start to feel the chromium process start to emerge it comes back here up right up and over then it comes back around and towards us, so it's going to hub a little bit. In this view, it's going to come up this way, right in through here like so. Okay, right in through here. It's curving around that spinal area, coming up and back, and then pushing forward. Okay, so this wants to here push forward, and this is where we're showing it coming at us now a little bit further. And so what happens, the clavicle is right here they touch they kiss it kisses the clavicle it makes that very uh bony protrusion on the shoulder that we see so we get this area it's a little flatter of the clavicle it's going to be doing this and then curving back over okay to the manubrium or the sternum and through here and then curving around that rib cage right over and through here it may not sit that low but it's pretty close right in through here. So there's the head of the sternal, sternal head, and we get that as it pushes over in through, in through there, coming over, click, kissing that, like I said, kissing the clavicle with the chromium process. This gets a little underturned in through here, okay? Then we have the carotid process. It's kind of coming up underneath it, and it's a little finger bone that goes the opposite direction a little bit, turns over through here, comes over and begins to poke itself out this way. So it's kind of a C curve in through here. This is a little complex shape. Right in through here, it pops itself out here. This is the finger part of it. Right in through there. Bulgy cylinder, right, coming outward. You see that coming back over. And it's attached to the glenoid cavity. Okay, so they're all, well, they're all attached, but but uh, the glenoid cavity is, is then directly below it. It's kind of a teardropped shape cylinder right in through here, okay? Underneath that little wire here, a little wider kind of ridge, and it's the socket part of the ball to the humerus, okay? So we have that coming around and over. We see that, there it is, and it's a little thicker. This gets a little bit underturned right through here, okay? and shaved. I'll go ahead and fill the rest of this in over here, the back part of the, the scapula. Okay, right in through here. Now this is, we're really looking through the rib cage right here. Okay, uh, on top of this would be ribs, would be pectorals, um, subcutaneous fat if there is any, I hope there's not too much close to the heart, but um, that, that would cover this up. But right in through here, this particular area, is going to show up in on the model quite often. Okay, so this is a bulgy curve. This actually can overlap, and this comes underneath a little bit. So it's important that turn over here with the clavicle, right in through here. That's important to see that as it turns through, right in through there. Okay, so turning, turning through, a chromium process kissing the clavicle, turning over the carotid process, right in through here, and then the glenoid cavity, right in through here, which that's, is that ball and socket that we want for our shoulder, for our humerus, and then the rest of it here. Now, what's important about the, the uh, scapula now is that this is underturned. This is overturned on the backside. Okay, on our back proper. This is underturned, and the reason why there's muscles that will be attaching here called the serratus anterior, saw-like muscles that come around 
and grab the rib cage. I'll show you that in the muscle section. They'll grab the rib cage kind of on the sides and they'll be dominant and very athletic or thin, thinner models, but you'll see it pop up and they won't be the ribs. Sometimes artists think that they're the ribs, but they're not. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful about that. Okay, so we have that. And then of course the ball and socket part of the uh, humerus is here. Fits in there nicely. It won't fit right next to it. It'll have uh, cartilage in material in there. But there's the ball right through there. Then it gets this little flat head and through here. And then we're on our way kind of down the down the shoulder, right through there. And of course the bones are two black cylinders, etc. And so on. Okay, so uh, let's put on now the rest of the scapula over here in the simpler view. So the scapula now would float on top. So we're looking down now here on a triangle. How do you do that? Well, this is why you have to think of it simply. So the top of the scapula would be very much right just like that. Really that simple, kind of a wedge. Now it's not right next to the spine. It's, it's a little bit wider out, probably here. So we float on top a little bit here, right? Okay, then we have the acromion process coming up over, kissing the clavicle, right in through here, right? So we see that, that area. So there's the scapula, acromion process coming over, kissing, touching the scapula, the carotid process, remember underneath it coming back and through pointing a little bit. Remember this right over here. So we have that here, this is a very top view. Difficult but exciting view. Right in through here. Okay. Glonoid cavity underneath it. Probably would just see it um, not open, certainly like this, but more just along the line. Probably pushed in and overlapped by the carotid process a little bit, but like this to there. Okay. And then that ball joint would fit nice around it. And if the arm was maybe raised, well, yeah, maybe raised a little bit. Then we have a little flattening over here. Then raised, I'll just do it slightly raised, like so. And we'll just end that for now. And that, that process there. So, of course, and then we have the, the all the ribs coming around, right? Coming around, coming around, to the front, to the back here. So we get that feeling. This attaching there. And let's get the other side now of the, the scapula. So again, floating here, floating on top, that triangular wedge, right, coming around here, triangular, 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 getting wider. And we're looking straight down on it, okay? It's important to denote. So we see that. And then we see the acromion process, the spine of it, take off, come up and raise, right? So we're right here. Looking down on it, let me shade this a little bit. All right, so we're looking down on it. <clears throat> it comes up, comes over, touches, kisses. Remember, kisses the the clavicle through here. So the more of the body of back in through here, then we come over carotid process, coming back and twisting over, kind of a crooked finger in through here, right through there, carotid process right through there, and then the glenoid cavity underneath it, pretty flat in this view because we're looking straight down on a kind of a disc, undercut disc, right in through here, okay? And then we have the ball of the humerus roughly right in through here, and then we'll just leave that as we're looking straight down. We might see just a little bit of the front of it down. We might see something like kind of that for now. There we go. All right. And so this whole area without muscle, right in through here is called the pit of the neck. So we have trapezius muscle coming down off in through here. I'm not gonna get into that later on, but of course we have the sternum in through, in through here. So getting in this view, you might see a little bit of that coming through right over here, coming over the scapula, right in through there, coming down. So the triangle right would be here, if we were drawing it in between, about halfway down and up and around, right? We see that, okay? Drawing it underneath the chromium process coming over to kiss the, kiss the clavicle, the carotid process coming over about right in through the finger coming over, and then the glenoid cavity underneath it 
right in through here. We curve in and over. See, it's not so bad when you, you, you get it underneath there. And then, of course, the humerus would ball out. Spherical part of the humerus right in through here, a little flatter on the, the lateral edge, and then out and down as we as we see that so again you know we could go into greater stru uh, not structural detail but finite detail i'm not here to sit and render for 30 hours one bone you will get bored what i'm here is you can what i'm saying is you can commit these to memory over time and by drawing bones and by well, later on we'll draw muscles and really begin to see that this process is memorable and you can memorize it, and then you can render when you want to render for aesthetic beauty. These are not, I, I wouldn't call them aesthetically beautiful. I would say they're accurate diagrams of what we need for an artistic anatomy. Remember, we're studying artistic anatomy, and there's greater complexity than we'll ever get into. And then I'll ever know, because I don't need to know it, and don't want to, don't want to know it. And that in, in, in terms of um, what I need to get an accurate model, uh, rendered and, and uh, drawn. Okay, I think that's important. So what I want to do now, the next step here, is to apply this knowledge, to apply all our torso bones, right, the clavicle, the rib cage, the sternum, which is part of the rib cage, and the scapulae, into now uh, a few more diagrammatic positions. But let's, this, you know, we're only in a front, back, side, in top. Let's move around in perspective and see how that gets more difficult, but how we can manage that by drawing the box of the rib cage, knowing that it's sort of a box in 3D and how we can put these together a little bit further. One thing I do want to show you further that I haven't yet that I need to is to to get it on this the cervical curve of the spine and I want to show you up here, make sure we're in the camera, is that we have the cervical part of the spine here, right? This curve, we have this beautiful curve this way, thoracic curve, lumbar curve, and then back to the sacral coccygeal. Look at those four, four beautiful movements. One, two, three, four. Commit that to memory. One, two, three, four. Remember, we're at C7 here, C7. We're at the 10th rib here, and then we're at the start of the sacrum here. So we'll talk more about this beautiful curve from the side that shows you we're not just right, we're not just straight up and not just uh, a lateral. I think that's going to be truly important as well to understanding, you know, more of the complexities of, of what we're doing with, um, with the with, with the model. You know, all this is meant to be um, edifying and clarifying. Not easy, certainly it's not easy, but it's uh, clarifying in terms of uh, how you can go about um, getting richer and deeper with um, figure drawing. Okay, all right, so let's go on to the next little part here. All right, let's quickly talk about the, the curve and the form and the look of the, of the spine. Uh, uh, I want to go in a little bit more detail. So the first thing I want to show you are the four curves here. So we have curve one, curve, excuse me, curve two, curve three, and lastly curve four. So we have one, right, two, three, and we have curve number four. So curve number one is cervical. So from the, the cervical uh, uh, vertebrae number one to here to C7, right in through here. Okay, so we have this little guy here with a nice strong uh, spinous process, really strong protrusion there. That really will bump out the neck running through there. That will give us this beautiful kind of neck curve in through there, especially in the back. So you're going to feel that. And then you're going to have the thoracic curve right in through here. Okay, so thoracic curve up until about the 10th rib from what I see. My, uh, my research here, 10th rib. And then we're going to start to change that thoracic um, curve. 
curve here to lumbar. About the tenth rib back over to stabilize to get you back through to where the sacrum starts. About right in through here, okay. So we have the cervical curve, C, we have the thoracic curve, TH, and we have the sac uh, the lumbar curve, L U M B. And then right about here at the start of the sacrum, we have the sacral or coxi and coxygeal curve right in through here. Kind of comes back in through here. <clears throat> and we have that nice curve. So curve number one, curve number two, curve number three, and beautiful curve number four. So we're not straight up and down. Rather, we're very much... Uh, uh, stabilized by this, this, this stabilizing kind of curve. And so you see if we have a straight line here. Uh, let's get a ruler. <clears throat> and you see if we made a straight line, how different. Look at the difference of that. That's pretty amazing. Right in through there. And so look at all that curvature that goes on right in through there and we see there's a lot of stabilizing there's some touching points of that lumbar right in through here at ten, the 10th rib where we get to the lumbar and then right in through here about where the cervical curve ends to C7 right in through there there where they almost kind of touch that's pretty important to see pretty amazing too as well um, so there you go with the with the um, the feeling of the, of the spine the next thing I want to kind of show you is is that it's three-dimensional so the whole thing feels like, is like, and wants to be a tube. And the longer we get, so we got our curve right here. Okay. And sacral. It wants to stay a tube all the way through. So the spinal column goes through the vertebrae and it's very much a cylinder, a cylindrical kind of tube. And as we go down the curvature, get a little bit wider with the, those cylinders until we wind up way on down here, right? So we're at the thoracic curve in through here, curving, right, curving. And there's 33 of these. That's a lot. There's 33 of them. I'm not going to have you count them all out. I'm not going to draw every one. Because the idea is to get the form, what the form is doing, what the form is feeling, right? So we're getting this turning, this kind of tube movement. And then we get into here to lumbar, and they start to get pretty big in the 20s, right in through here, and they're turning. And the angle of their turn starts to get pushed as well. Um, downward even further. So these are pretty serious now bones and of course they have, I'm going to draw one a few out for you to do more details. So we get down and through here and then they end over here right in through here and then they take off into the sacral uh, uh, plane and through here right so the, kind of this structure that comes down and comes over like that under curving and, and underneath like so. Simplified, but like so. And so look at how tube-like, cylindrical all these are. So you put the curve together, the four curves, the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar, this could be close actually, the lumbar, and then the coccygeal sacral and what you get is a very very elegant little little tube going and of course I, I broke my pencil again so that's what I do um, so you get that idea so play off that in your drawings boom right to that to that the whole human figure the bones the muscles are doing this constantly in and out, one side to the other. Remember, this is artistic anatomy. This is not medical anatomy. Um, I wouldn't make it as a doctor right now. This would not be doctor approved, but for artists, it's artist approved. And it's for drawing.
And that's what we need movement. So we're right now we're connecting movement, remember, uh, and movement and movement and rhythm. There we go. So again, cervical number one, right? C seven, where it changes, right in there. That spinous process is coming out, and then we have the thoracic coming back in the back of the rib cage. The spine is at the back of the rib cage, middle back, not the front or in the middle. The spine isn't in the middle. That's important. Then boom, we get to the tenth rib here. Okay, get the tenth rib. Okay, coming in over. We get to ten there, and then we change again. So cervical, thoracic, number three, lumbar, and then the last one after the sacrum. Boom, we get that curve, number four. We get that sacral or coccygeal, both curve. Pretty important stuff. Nice, beautiful rhythm and movement. Now let's come over here and let's take a look at the uh, vertebrae because there's things you want to know about it. It's, it's worth the time to draw a simplified vertebrae. And if you want to render the hell out of one, in your own time, go for it. But I'm going to give you a simpler approach so you can remember it and put it together. The first thing you want to remember is it's at the back of the spine, number one. That's most important. It's not in the middle. And it's not in the front, which I know, I know you know that for sure. Everybody will know that. But students have a tendency to start to put it in the middle or they make the rib cage go way out here. Well, now it ends right right there that's important to denote tenth rib roughly to the to the xiphoid process right in here to the sternum itself over to the end end and through there of course this would be out actually out in front so and then we would attach around in through there so let me sharpen up this pencil and then we'll we'll draw a few of these cylinders type structure. So the vertebrae is a cylinder. It's a stubby kind of cylinder too as well. It's pretty it's pretty stout. And of course as you go down the uh, uh, spine they get more and more uh, stout and wider. In between them all is cartilage material, discs, right to protect them if you slip a disc or those spine touch each other the nerves will be just absolutely mind-numbingly painful so let's draw a few in different positions so we're going to start out with their basic form we're going to draw them pretty big here make sure i'm in camera i did it i can't believe i started in camera here we'll draw so here's a basic form of what they look like all of them different parts. So we're going to draw one here. It's kind of like a spool, isn't it? So we're going to draw another one here. Okay. <clears throat> and then we'll draw one maybe three quarters looking at it from the a top view. Something like this. So here's our cylinder. Uh, axes X and Y to get a feel for that. And back to the spool, back to the spool, the cylindrical part of it, and this will curve out even further. Okay, kind of like that. These kind of cut in like this and they ridge out a little bit, I've noticed when they do that. And then we'll draw one from maybe, let's see, in camera. Can I get in camera? Yeah, right in through uh, here. Yeah, barely make sure I get in camera. There we go. Right out here. Yeah, barely down there. All right. So we may, we may move this up. Or I'll start a different sheet. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so we have that basic tube now. So <clears throat> what happens here is we've got this structure inside of it, inside the spools where the spinal column goes. Okay, all the way through all roughly 33 of them. And the doctor will tell you more about that. I don't have to know that. That's just where they're protected in that spool. Okay? So that's our, that's our form, the cylinder. Then 
What we want to know after that is you've got these processes that go on them uh, in the back, so they're located on the back part, and it's important because they're on the back here, like so. If they start pointing down, they can show up on the model. That's why that's important, okay? So, <clears throat> what they are, the spinous process comes out, and they protrude outward. We're in the, this is the front back here, and then this is this area here is the back. I'm just going to write that out here. I'll probably have to draw that. But we'll come through here a little bit. And they tend to ridge downward for the most part. Some pop up in the lumbar. Here and here, okay? And they tend to come downwards a little bit, kind of like an elephant trunk or an aardvark. Like so, this is the ridge of it. And they have a little thickness on both sides here as they come up and over like this, okay? And over like that. So if we did a little shading here for now. They go dark. Go to the dark. I try not to break. There we go. So they have that going on. All right, kind of flat and curved through here. So both these sides are, they've got a little movement coming back uh, to them, okay? Now, <clears throat> the next part is, so we've got, this is the spinous process. So the SP, it really shows up, spinous process, SP, really shows up on the model at times, especially if they're thinner. We'll, We'll have models that we'll see that on. Okay, and they tend to look like ears a little further. They come out like this, they pop out, and they come out a little bit here, like so. They tend to emerge, pop out, and then trend slightly backwards. So they've kind of got like a head to it, like a popcorn head, but a tube mostly, kind of like this, like so. So let me darken that in too as well. And these are called the transverse process on either side, the transverse processes here. So I'll put TP here for transverse process. Okay, this is very cylindrical, coming across very cylindrical here, up, really over. Like so. Okay, in theory, and this comes over and out like this. Again, the transverse process is three prongs, kind of like a wing or an ear. And this is kind of like a nose or a snout in this way, in this direction. Spinal column in through here. So it's pretty small coming through. There's quite a bit of material and bone. Your ribs attach, your back ribs will attach underneath these, about right in through here, this area. I forget what it's called, it doesn't really matter to me. If you want to look it up, that's great. But they'll attach in through here, so that'll be the rib in through there. So transverse process. But you'll see these bumps, and they're primarily, I want you, this is the reason why we're drawing the transverse ones too, but they're primarily the, the spino, spinous processes that, that pop out. Mostly into here. So this flattens out a little bit right here. This comes down towards this a little bit. You have you have all that goodness coming up and through and underneath here. So that's kind of a sort of a top looking view from the from the very back uh, area. Let's do one now here where we see <clears throat> a little bit maybe more three-quarter like so so we have the <clears throat> area here coming through this would be here this would be the front 
the spinal spinous process would be here. And so what happens is, is that as these tend to ridge down a little bit, coming in through here. Sometimes they trend downward, sometimes they trend flat. When we get down to the lower lumbar, they tend to be about straight and they can raise up again and they get even bigger. So maybe I'll do something that feels more like a lumbar. They could come up a little bit, really big, like this. And they get wider and they tend to come down like, mm, like this. And you can see where this would fit through the back, fit through where the latissimus dorsi attaches to the sides of the ribs, the back ribs, and the spine there. And sometimes on models that are more fit or thinner, you'll see that bone pop through. These little processes, spinal processes here, spinous process in through here, then it comes through, then it comes curling up, okay, and then reattaches here, so this is kind of softly here. Of course this curves, ridged, and through there, up, like so, and let's draw the the ears a little bit, the transverse process of what I call the ears. Be careful with that. But they kind of tend to come out through here around, and then they want to come out and over this way and back, back towards us, like so. So we have that. Kind of like. Kind of like that in a simple, simplified way. Okay, so they attach to the to the back of the tube of the disc in the beginning, like so. So this is the, the SP, the spinous process. This is the transverse process. Okay, so we have that. And then the other side, we can come around the two, feel that two-point perspective, right? Feeling that over. This is gonna come this way and outward flange out, and then curl back in and over like so, okay? And then come this way, a little bit lower. <clears throat> So we have a transverse process. We might see the top here attached, curving back in. Now these are very simplified. I'm simplifying these down so you can understand them to see what you to see what you can remember how to draw them. Then if you remember their basic functional parts, forms, right? How they function, how they look, then you can put them together and then you can, as you're observing a real model, then take them to the next level of of really wild, you know, finished rendering because they're very bony and, and rocky looking, I suppose, bony and rocky, right? So we have that, of course, this is coming across like so. And this tends to flatten out here, see that? And then it tends to come over, come over. This tends to come, and then it comes over here, come over this ridge like so here, and then it gets ridged here, and then it gets ridged. So there's a little bit of a, a, a head to it, or a bump right through there. That's important. important to see and make that clear as well. And then lastly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move, uh, you can see this in the camera, yeah, I'll do it this way. All right, so we have the cylindrical column very simplified. Remember, we're artistic anatomy. How can we simplify this a little bit? So we have the structural quality of a bone here that is encasing the spinal column here. There's the spinal column. And if this is now the front here, back here, the back, what happens? We have the spinous process here. Okay, over here. Let's let me get in put it in the center a little bit, spinous process here, from the, looking from the very top downward, then we have the transverse process coming out here, 
okay, on this side. And the same thing now on the other side in a very simplified kind of view. That's the simple way to think of it, and that's where we need to read it right now is in its simple, in its simplest term. That's going to help you when you conceive of and you see these bumps, especially the spinous process, when you see those bumps emerging on the figure, that's what you know you're drawing. And there's 33 total, all the way down from C1 down to the coccygeal one down below. And a lot of times you'll see them more pronounced. We can see them all over, but especially right in through the lumbar and thoracic area below and, and mid 10th rib area, but look for them all over, um, especially if somebody's very sinewy or very ripped back there, but still pretty thin, um, that that can happen uh, quite a bit. All right. All right. So let's go on to the next next part. All right. So let's take a look at some more complex positions we can put the rib cage in. So I'm going to draw some rib cage rectangular boxes first, and I'll show you how we can we can work this a little bit and get different uh, viewpoints. So I'll start here. It's a challenge for me sometimes to keep things in the camera, isn't it, a little bit. So we're going to kind of gesture this where we want the rib cage to be. So I'm thinking of a box first, this front part of a box for the entire rib cage and through here in the side a little bit. Just, just very gesturally, gingerly where things can go. So one could Put a system here a little bit. Maybe we'll have another one. Whoops, there we go. I knew I was gonna not get that in the camera. How about that? All right, so we have that there, and we could have maybe another one oh, out here a little bit, so we can think of it maybe as sort of a side kind of ribcage box a little bit here. Maybe you get a little bit of the little bit of the top. Maybe back in through that way. Center in through here. This hopefully will make sense to you in a little bit. And then maybe one more where we'll get a little box kind of more in the front, but we're going to do more of a tilt here so we can start to put this together. What I'm trying to show you and demonstrating as you draw along, you will want to draw along, is that we can start to see this system now is living, relatively speaking. We're going to put it all together with muscles uh, later on in this series, this particular series. But see this as memorable and memorizing this so we can have this um, memorized in our mind for drawing out of our heads or whatnot. Um, and this is why this is important to, you can render bones all day with light and make them look photo real. That's great. I think you should do that if that's what you want. But what will carry you further is, is um, memorization, so we have to simplify. So the first thing we've done is we've simplified the box. Now we're going to look at this rib catch and start to pull some relevant anatomy out of it. So the first thing I see is we're looking at it. We may see the top of the manubrium here, so we'll come down and say, okay, that's about half where we want, and it will come down, that will be the 10th rib, 10th rib right in through there. So what we're not going to see is the opening of the rib cage. We're going to curve around here, curve around, right? You can see my box is bigger, but I can always reshape my drawing. I don't have to be beholden to my box. This is going to be opening up the costal cartilage of the rib cage in through here. We'll come down, open this up and over. So we've got that measurement going, our xiphoid process, right? In through here, sternal base to the manubrium up. And of course, we will end right in through there. We might see, we'll, we'll definitely see some of the clavicle in through here, turning in, in through here as well. Now what we have, we have this rounded part of our rib cage, 10th, 10th rib here, right? So we fill this 10th rib in through here. I tend to make my rib cages pretty barrel chested, so sometimes they can be flatter. That's all right for now. I think that's fine. <clears throat> Out through here, right? Coming over, coming over. These are quick, relatively quick studies. Okay, you see how you can start to commit this to memory. Now, this is underneath this cavity here, right? So this bowls underneath, bowls underneath, right? And through here, these come up. The spine. It's coming back to thoracic curve, right? It's coming back through here, thoracic curve. 
in through here and out and be over okay right in through there lumbar curve so thoracic actually a little bit more underneath if we get the lumbar through here like so and then we would just feel this tube now in through here right we feel that tube coming up and through and back and over okay I'm gonna blur that out so we can see through okay and then this, of course this cavity would be open as we can see through a little bit and now we have the <clears throat> Costal cartilage here, costal cartilage here in our drawing, right? We feel that. Coming through here, this would kind of flatten out a little bit as we feel this structure in through here, okay? Now we can put the clavicles on through here, so we have clavicle up, so long horn, bicycle handle, curving around that rib cage and coming over, coming over, and starting to flatten it straight right in through here a little bit, up, in curving, right, curving over and back this way, and kind of get this disappear, and then the overlapping curve and one starts to straighten out about right in through, in through here. So we have that clavicle into our rib cage coming out, flattening a little bit further down and through. This tends to ridge here when we see it. The bottom part of the costal cartilage, it's, it has a little bit of rigid. We might see some of that just in our diagram and through here. Make those a little, a little darker and through there. Then we might see a little bit of the scapula over through here, the carotid process, right in through the scapula, maybe coming over the acromion process, kissing the clavicle, right in through there, right? Carotid process, glenoid cavity. Okay, right in through there, correct. So the triangle of our scapula would be, we could do it in a different color. It could be here, right? Well, maybe brown. Okay, see how this is memorable? We're turning this rib cage around over and through here, about halfway down and through there, right? So there's your clavicle coming through there. And then of course the humerus, the ball, roughly in through here and then maybe out. We'll do this just kind of coming out through here, roughly. Maybe a little bit harder charcoal pencil. Or softer, let's see if I can find something softer over here. Medium, that might get it. Sorry about that. A little, there we go, a little bit easier to push. A little bit, of course, that's turn in through there. So now we've got situation here, vertebral, here you're coming over. There we go, like so. Okay. Like so. Okay. So now we have a our first rib cage there memorized. So different in different boxes. So let's try another one here. So <clears throat> we have this one here. We could say, okay, maybe the head is here. This could be C7, which is going to drive this rib cage this oval form here first. So we're going to see a, a strong back view of a neck here, right? So neck coming over and through here. So the neck over here in this one, we have a little bit of a space left would come over here like so. You might see something like that. If the head was raised, it could be pushed back too as well. <clears throat> so we have this over. So we're getting that rib cage back feel side of it boxy feel where this turns over and turns back, turns over, turns back, right? Like so. In through here. <clears throat> now, we can feel it center right through here. So we're coming through its center right through here, okay? So we'd feel the split of that spine. Now the spinous processes and transverse processes of our cylinder. Okay, so we have that. <clears throat> And then, of course, this is going to carry us over. So these are going to come over now. The spine is going to pull back here, like so. These bones are going to pull, pull back, pull back. But they're also now coming, later on, coming over, too, as well. So over. So this is all going to be pulling this way 
and over this way, over that way. So we have that box here, right? And we now feel this, these structures coming this way, this way, this way, and around, right? This way, this way, and around, this way, and now around and through, topping out up, coming over, coming over this way. So we feel that cagey quality of that spine coming in through here. So now we have that. Of course, we're not going to draw every rib. We can start to feel just this cylinder part of the uh, vertebrae coming in through here, coming in through here and over. So the lumbar curve in through here, right? And then we start, uh, thoracic curve, excuse me, and then we start to thrill the lumbar curve coming down in through here, right? Like so, we could top out like that. Turn away from us just a little bit. Curve, curve, curve. Like so, curve over, curve over. <clears throat> right? And then lastly, we can start to say, okay, we can start putting on the, the uh, scapula in through here. So about halfway down our, our kind of boxy uh, egg form, we can start to get a little bit more familiar here, right in through here and over. Okay, so we have the ending part coming in here, triangular shape, right in through here, right, triangular shape here, triangular shape, probably wouldn't see it, start to float here, you might see a little bit of that, and then over, the acromion process, the spine of it, right in through like that, and over, and back over, right in through there to uh, the clavicle. So we then have the spine of it, of uh, the acromion process, heading out, topping out here, right? Bulging and then coming back over to do what? Kiss the clavicle. It's like, mwah, hello. Pretty silly, I know, but it's, it's a good way, I think. At least I can learn it that way. Down and over, and that will get us back to the sternum, which will be back up and through here. Then we have the carotid process that will be turning underneath and then the ending part, underturn of the glenoid cavity, turning away from us, right in through, right in through there. And then if we have the arm of the humerus, let's see, coming out this way, we have it there, the ball socket, right in through there, and we can have an arm coming out, coming out that way as well. So once you start to manage this, this gets pretty easy. Of course, this. This is overcut, right? Overcut. That's important to know because the muscles of the infraspinatus, the trapezius muscle will hang off in here and come up and ridge over and down. That's important to know later on. I'm just going to tone this in a little bit so we can show off this clavicle a little bit further. And then, of course, down in through here, we've got the... <clears throat> the area where we see the divot, now the bulge of where the feeling of the rib cage, 10th rib, about right, right in through here, coming down and over. Okay, right in through there. Right in through here, feeling, you'll feel that against the skin, it might look something like, this. whoops, coming over through. You might feel it there, and this might start out to be the oblique, a little bit of the belly running through there, and the back would be over, over on top of that. So that's important to see that inside here. Okay, let's go on to the next one here. So we'll say that the <clears throat> the top of the rib cage. Um, would be up here so we could start there we'd actually see that so we could feel that narrow rib cage and remember it's going to be lower in the front why because it's on about a 20 degree uh, uh, change for us right so we know that that tilt here looking at it's high here where c7 could be right in through there and then we come around and we've got about a 15 to 20 degree change over here's the Here's the sternum coming on down. So that's about 20 degrees. I think I said 15 in, my, in the lap, the first part. 15 to 20, just know that it's roughly in that ballpark. I, don't, I didn't measure it, it's not really that 
important. What's important to know that there's a tilt and the back is higher than the front. So we have the back here, right? <clears throat> Bringing that over, and then we're going to bring down the the sternum here of uh, of the rib cage. Bringing that down. Going to put it into here. So halfway. Here's halfway. Halfway, same distance, right in through here. Okay, and then halfway over. Now we're in perspective, so this box would come over now. So halfway here, and there's our tenth rib. So our tenth rib in through there. You can narrow this out a little bit. I tend to make mine a little wider, a little barrel chest. I always have to watch it a little bit. Running through there, a little narrower. Okay, coming through and back and over. And so there it is already now. There's the rib cage. Okay. Right in through there, spinal column, roughly in through here, lumbar curve. Would be doing slightly this, right in through here to get to the, excuse me, the thoracic curve. I keep saying lumbar, thoracic curve, right? It's curving, right in through here to get over to the lumbar curve. Uh, this will bell over. So this is the tenth rib and the back of the rib cage. Just want to feel that. We don't want to draw that. So you can see where we don't want to draw those ribs because we're going to put lots of material on top of it. The intercostal cartilage, or costal cartilage, right here, okay, right there, okay, flattens out a little bit in our drawing. Okay, right through there. Okay, flatter, flatter. Then we can put on the sternum in through here. I can get through without breaking the pencils. Manubrium right, manubrium here. The first rib. Uh, so coming down a really little flatter, larger bit, then the base gets narrower, so we narrow down. Tends to come in, and they have little phalanges where each area of the ribs are attached to, but for the most part, it's just the base. Gets a little wider here, and then we're at the xiphoid process that comes down. Of course, we have it over here. We see that. Render around it so we can see it. There we go. Xiphoid process. So they, remember, these are from just our imagination. We want to be able to do that if we can, to start to memorize these areas. So <clears throat> we have that. All right, and then we have our xiphoid process. Then we can start to say, all right, this might be a little flatter if we wanted to come up in through here, but I'll, I'll, I'll still buy that. Clavicles, clavicles coming over, and we'll say, all right, now, nice strong S-curve coming back, really feeling the rib uh, part, this curve part for just a little bit, and then S-curve S out, and then boom, here we are coming over. Horn shape or bicycle shape, there's our one clavicle through here. All right, so we'll put this hollow where the neck is, or we can come out with the neck, like so. This will get larger and wider. Okay, there's our neck there, like so. Okay. <clears throat> then we can come down the clavicle, okay, coming up. So back, connected to the manubrium with the sternum, back, curving around, curving around, and then curving and straightening out and over. Okay, getting ready to kiss the acromion process, if you will. Okay, this could come through, the little muscles come through like so. The pit of the neck, we'll talk about that. I've talked about that head anatomy. Sternocleidomastoid muscle coming down. We'll just fill it in for now. And then we've got the, the scapula now coming over so we can find the triangle through the backside about right here and over, right? So we just feel it. You can feel it, how it's connected there, and then the other side over. Feel that leaning outward a little bit, coming over and connected, and then back. See how they fit together. So we're looking through now, x-ray, to see where they're at. We can feel that. So see how we can memorize that. How can you do that by rendering one clavicle for for 30 hours. Um, but it's a different, a little bit different, uh, I think, ending points. This is also, you know, this is also for drawing out of your head. 
in drawing from imagination as well as drawing from observation. If it's just about observation, you know, only you might, you know, you might want to sit there and render all day, but um, you still have to know what you're drawing in its shape and its form. Okay. There we go. So we have that. And then we, we're going to feel this curved indention, the acromion process, rise up right, come over and kiss the clavicle right in through here. We're going to see the carotid process. Remember the crooked finger coming over, crook itself down. There's the old carotid process there. Okay. <clears throat> then we're going to see the glenoid cavity right immediately underneath it, kind of a teardrop shape. Right in through, right in through there. That and over, here's the rib, rib area. Right in through there. And of course the glenoid cavity. And then the ball, the humerus, ball and socket joint. Then maybe this arm would be doing something way out here. I'll just keep it out of the way. Like so, and then out, tubed. Two black quality out like that. And then the same thing over here now, we start to see the scapula emerge, chromium process coming up and over, coming down around and kissing, touching the clavicle right in through there. See so that works out nicely. The crooked finger of the carotid process about right in through here, crooking over, okay? And then the glenoid, because here's our here's our cat, here's our triangle. Still, let's keep our triangle of our, of our uh, clavicle, back in through there. And then again, right here is our glenoid process, cavity, excuse me, glenoid cavity. Ball the humerus here. And then we can put our arm maybe out here a little downward. And we're on our, on our way that way. All right, I think we've got space to do maybe one, one more nice one over here. Let's do one more and, and work on that too as well. So we've got, <clears throat> Let's do another shape. Let's do something where, where we're upside down a little bit. Maybe something a little bit more challenging. Let's say if the opening, make sure I'm on camera here, Dead gimmick. You don't break a pencil. Here we go, this way. So maybe we're going this direction, okay? And But the head is towards this direction. Maybe we'll do something like, let's see, this. Okay, so first of all, I'm looking at a box. Okay, I'm thinking about a box in this direction, kind of a narrow for the rib cage. See how I make mine a little barrel? That's okay. Barrel chest. I tend to be barrel chested. I tend to be pretty big. I haven't seen myself on camera in a while for this video. Looks like uh, Professor Leone could stand to lose a little bit of extra subcutane subcutaneous fat. It's like, okay, there. Let's go, mister. So I'll be doing that. Uh, we're almost in summertime now. So it's time for me to get moving. All right, neither here nor there. Sorry about that. There's my box, okay? And so the side of the, the rib cage I see, and I'm gonna draw the box here and here and here, just so just to get a feel for it. Of course, I'll change it as I feel. So very, very sketchy, very loose. All right, so we have that. Now we're gonna put the head here as if we're kind of in a foreshortened position or the neck. So I'll draw the neck on here first. Here, okay, so we can see the opening of the rib cage, that narrower opening here. Then it gets a little higher in the back. It's not a straight line. See, it would be here if I did, like so. But it's actually angled. Why am I doing it that way? Because that's anatomy tells me to do so. So there's about a 15 or 20 degree change, right? Then when we come out, maybe the neck is gonna do this around and here, okay? And then I might say, we're gonna cut off the head and, and just say, okay, there's the cylinder for the neck. Right in through, right in through there. So there's my cylinder. And we'll draw through that a little bit. Now we can, we can go on and say, okay, great. So now I've got the sternum. The sternum is gonna arch up a little bit, shorten out right in through here is where the end of the base would be, the xiphoid process coming out a little bit, a little thin point, right? Right in through there, okay? <clears throat> so this distance now from the manubrium here, outward, got the same feeling, 10th rib. See how I was long there? It's okay, that's what we're here to do to help you, to help, my, help yourself draw 
and change when you need to your volume. So here and over, bring that 10th rib over, right? So now we're gonna narrow this down. Here's where the box is. This is where I see the costal cartilage here, right? And here, okay? Flatten that down. It gets a flat, even though it's still in a round, it's a little flatter. This comes over and does that. This comes over and does that. Then these want to come around. It gets that more egg-shaped form, and then we're starting to curve in. I mean, these ribs are doing this, right? They're just, they're turning and coming over. Okay, we're coming through here, right? So we're coming through here, getting this bell boxy shape up and through and around. Look at that. So we're coming back to the back of the rib cage. They're here and over. Right in through there like that, okay? Now the rest of the body, body might be doing this. We get to the obliques and ever this might go down some to the belly, depending on the, the person. Wouldn't be Professor Lanny. He's got a little, mine would be this way. So I gotta watch it. There we go. Okay. So we have that. So let's finish out the sternum now, the base of the sternum here. Okay. And then the manubrium wider in through here, the kind of the head of the longhorn. Through here and through here. Okay. Cyclic process a little smaller in through there. All right, so now we got some nice movement. Now the, the intercostal ribs, cartilage, costal cartilage area. This is a little fat, flatter in through here. There we go. So we have that. And then we have our turn of our, our top, top rib and through here. Then our clavicle sits on top of that. Right and through here touching. Remember to get that strong curve in the beginning. So we got an S curve here and then here, right? So we curve through, S curve over, over. And then we're coming on through, then flatten out like so. Right through there. Okay, let's do... The other side, now the the, um, the vertebrae would be right here, vertebral column to start. Right and through there and come back, arch into the thoracic curve. I'll just show a little bit of that. And now, diagrammatically speaking, <clears throat> then we have the next clavicle here, really, it's a pretty strong X curve, S curve, especially from this position. It's so a little bit more foreshortened here. Coming around tight and then out. You can kind of feel it this way, two point perspective here, right? Right through there <clears throat> and coming through. So we feel that down and over. This might overturn it a little bit, and then it starts to flatten. It might even come back up just a little bit and then over and then finish out. So we might see it a little bit more like, like that and over, top of that. Through. So see how we're simplifying all this complexity. So we can manage it and add complexity to it and make beautiful renderings of the figure if and when, when you're ready to do that. Here and through there. So I think we've got just about all the parts. Let's put the scapula on. This will be a nice challenge. Right? So remember the triangle now. So remember to think of it, the acromion process kisses it. It's gonna, we're going to see it here. So we're going to see just kind of the top of the scapula here, chromium process, right? And then it's going to go down, way down here, that triangle here, right? There it is. You see it right there? There it is down the back and through there. Let's find the other one coming over center here of our spine, if you will, right in through there. <clears throat> A little bit of distance, we can start from the acromion process. Kissing the clavicle here, coming over, and then down, okay, right in through here. And a little bit wider than 45, coming over. Bring this over to here, I'll put a dot there, and then there's our, there's the back part of our cleft. So see how you can put all this on when we know that. How can you do that if you're just rendering all the time? You won't memorize it. You know, so I, I advise you to do this first before you go into those really beautiful anatomical renderings. Otherwise, I think you're you're gonna defeat yourself. I'm pretty 
pretty positive with my experience. I've seen, you know, beautiful, the Russian kind of academy that I've seen out there that does that kind of thing. They show you every, all the parts of it. It's all beautifully rendered. It's all slick and all, but I don't know that they can do this as fast as those of us that learned a more constructive method, which is a Renaissance method, by the way. It's like you're paying homage to Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo. All dim guys, right? Dim dudes. So we got the chromium process here. That's all you're really going to see back here. And then you're going to see, remember the crooked finger, the carotid process will pop in right in through here. We'll see the top part of it here. Okay, like so. Remember the glenoid cavity, so it's kind of a pear shape. Here's the top of the pear. It's going to get overlapped a little bit. There it is, probably right there. Okay. The back, there it is, the back of it. And then we put our humerus on. So I'm thinking upside down, right? And, and from the top. So there's our ball for our humerus. And then we'll kind of just put it maybe out this way. There's our gesture. And then we'll just leave it like that for now, right in through here. So the trick is to take these and see if you can do it later on. Do it from any any position. I could go on all day, but I'll put you to sleep. So carotid process, a crooked finger, right? Coming back over and in. Running through here, okay? Pointing through. Glenoid cavity, top, we'd, we'd be overlapped a little bit, right in through here. There's where your humus, humerus sits. Right in through there, that top little flatter over through here. And then maybe down and over and we kind of just see it maybe just disappear a little bit over the body of that and through there there we go and so pit of the neck a little further here let's recapture the the just the general cylindrical quality of our neck here of our figure and then we can go a little darker in these spots to show you this cavity later on down through the ribs, and through there. All right, I think we're ready now to go on to muscles. We're gonna take a look at the Ecorge, Houdin's Ecorge, which I have a tinier model. And then we're going to see and analyze each individual muscle. <clears throat> and understand their shape and form and function too. And then we're going to group them together with the living living anatomy. Put them all together. And we'll use some we'll use some figures for that. Okay. All right. So let's go on to that next step.